Hey guys, it's me again, and today I'm going to be making a video showing how to get games on any version of your TI Inspire. So this can be TI Inspire, TI Inspire CAS, the TI Inspire CX, or the CX CAS. It works on all of them. Um, I'm going to show you how to get games on them. More specifically, uh, a Doom emulator, a Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulator, and an NES emulator. So you'll be able to run any of those types of games on your calculator. Now, if you look now, I actually have, as of making this video, I have the newest OS on my Inspire. Um, I am, you are going to have to downgrade that, but that won't be a problem. So the first step to doing this is to plug it, plug your calculator in, and then we'll head over to your computer. So I'll see you at the computer. Okay, so now that you're at your computer, uh, you need to remember your calculator is plugged in at this point. You're going to want to go to the description and you're going to want to click on the download link. You'll be brought to this Mediafire folder where you'll have these four options. You're going to want to download the uh, zip file according to what calculator you have. So for me, I just have the regular TI Inspire. Uh, so I'm going to download this one. I've actually already downloaded it, so I don't need to re-download it. Here it is. And all you got to do is extract it however you want. And then you open it up, and here's the step one process. And step one just has one text document, nothing else in it. What you do is you take the link in there, and you will go to that link, and it will bring you to a TI uh, Texas Instruments website here, where you're going to need to download the computer link software for, if you have a Mac, then you'll have to download the Mac version Windows for Windows. Uh, you're going to want to download that and install that. Now, I've already done this, so after you've downloaded it and install it, you're just going to want to launch the program there. So, I am launching it right now. Uh, it can take a few seconds. Alright, so now, uh, once you're, you got to remember your thing, your calculator has to be plugged in. Just hit the refresh, it'll pop up, and then you just click select. And, yeah, so as we can see here, uh, this has the latest version, so what we're actually going to need to do is we have to install, you have to select here, go to tools and click install handheld slash lab cradle OS. Uh, you're going to go into that folder, uh, that the TI, the folder that you extracted, then you're going to need to go into the step 2 folder, and there will be one TNO, or for TI, uh, the regular TI Inspire, it's TNO file. For others, it's other, like I know the CX is a TCO file, but you're just going to select the one file in there, and click install OS. It'll bring up this warning box. You're going to go ahead and click yes to that. And it will start installing the OS. So uh, this will take a little bit. And uh, uh, this, after this finishes, we're going to head on over to the calculator. And we'll see what it does here. OK, um, once it is finished uh, sending the OS, it will give you this uh, pop-up here saying, yeah, we've sent the OS. Now you got to wait for your calculator to reboot. So I'll just show you what that looks like now. OK, uh, now that the OS has been sent to the calculator, you'll see this loading bar pop-up. And it will say installing uh, OS version 3.1.0. Uh, I don't know, 0.392. And it'll say that, and it'll get a loading bar. And it says you can now unplug it. We're not going to unplug it. You just keep it plugged in. And so we'll wait for this loading bar to finish, and I will come back to you. Okay, after it finishes, you'll get this pop-up saying the handheld needs to restart. Just click OK. It will turn off, and it will turn back on. And you'll see the loading screen. And it will keep loading. Uh, this doesn't take too long. It'll load your new operating system. Um, yeah, almost done there. Almost. All right. And now uh, you'll get this. You'll get <coughs> uh, the setup screen again. Just hit enter three times or two times. Yeah, three times to get through that. Then to check to make sure you successfully installed it, just hit five and then four. And as you can see, I successfully installed it because now my current version is 3.1.0.392. So now we're going to head back on over to the computer. Okay, so now that it's installed, we can click OK on that. And it'll say nothing's connected because your handheld had to restart. So what we're just going to do is click on this button here. We're going to select our handheld again. If it's not there, just hit the refresh button, click on it, click select. 
and we're back in here. So now we're gonna start installing uh, the quote-unquote jailbreak uh, for the Inspire. So what we have to do first is create a new folder and you have to call this folder NDLESS. That's exactly what you have to call it. Um, so then you can just double click on that to open it up and now you are going to want on the file browser here to go back to where you're, uh, you extracted that folder. You're going to head on over to step 3 and you're going to see these two files. You are just going to want to select both the files and then drag and drop them right there. It will send the files. Uh, you'll get a pop-up on your calculator saying they were successfully sent and that is that step. Now head on over to the step 4 folder and you will have this endless installer file again you'll just drag that in the same folder uh, it'll warn you again uh, if you want to continue you just click yes now here's what you need to note it'll load about halfway here on your computer and it will stop that is okay to know if you installed this right you have to go over to the calculator so that's where we'll be heading now okay so even though the computer stopped uh, the transfer at about halfway it is okay because you'll get a message on your calculator that says endless has successfully installed always keep and endless as endless resources tns in your folder so um, if the message pops up on your calculator and says it successfully installed it successfully installed don't worry if it hasn't finished transferring on the computer you can just click okay to head out of that and then we'll go back to the computer okay so back here on the computer um, it'll just keep doing this forever so you can just hit cancel and actually the X button's faster and then it will get all messed up so what you have to do again is go here click on your inspire hit select and there we go it's back to normal again so now we're gonna start installing the emulators so first we will install a doom emulator this step is optional if you don't want doom then you don't have to have this um, yeah so what I'm gonna do personally just to be organized I'm going to create a new folder called Doom. And the files that you need, this one is the actual emulator itself. So you're going to drag that and copy that file there. Um, here's Doom 1. So you're obviously going to need either Doom 1 or Doom 2 uh, to actually play the game. So I will copy over Doom 1. I'm not going to copy over Doom 2, although it works the exact same as Doom 1 except for it's this it's doom 2 obviously i'm not going to copy it because it's like uh over almost 12 megabytes and it takes up too much room on my regular calculator but if you have a calculator like the scx that has uh over 100 megabytes of storage i would probably go ahead and install doom 2 anyways so now well, that's done we have successfully installed the doom emulator now we'll move on to the Game Boy emulator um once again i personally like to stay organized so i'm going to create a new folder whoops uh, hold on. I do not want to create it in Doom. Uh, so you got you got to double click on Documents here, and now you can create a new. F whoopsies. Now you can create a new folder. I'm gonna name mine Game Boy. Uh, to install the Game Boy emulator, just drag and drop that in there. I'll show you how to install the ROMs for these in a second. Now we're gonna install the N NES emulator. So I'm gonna create a new folder once again called NES and I'm gonna copy over this file from the step 7 folder and we've installed that um, so step 8 here are some instructions and uh, I like to copy these because it actually has the controls for the uh, NES spot NES emulator and the Game Boy emulator inside them so I'll just copy them there that way I can read them on my calculator later so that I can remember what the controls and stuff are and then step nine, this one's optional. Basically, uh, what this program will do, this program will allow you to patch it so that it, your calculator says your operating system is something different than what it already is. So basically, this is useful for when you plug your calculator into your computer and you start a program like this or the student software, then uh, it will ask you to update. But if you use this, then uh, you can just set it to say it's the latest operating system even though it isn't so then it won't ask you to update so I personally like to do this so to install this you just click on the endless folder and you drag and drop the TNS file into here okay now 
Now I'm going to show you guys how to install ROMs. So, uh, first, I'll show you how to install NES ROMs. So, for the NES ROMs, they have to go in the same folder as the NESspire.tns thing. That's why I made a new folder, so I can put it there. So, I have already downloaded a ROM, so what you have to do is first you have to get the ROM file itself, so I'm going to extract this. Uh, then the ROM file for an NES will end with a .NES extension. Now, to make this compatible with the uh, Inspire, all you have to do is you got to click Rename, move your cursor to as far right as possible, and then all you got to do is type in .TNS, so you're just adding another file extension onto the end of this, and then you click Enter. It'll give you a warning. Uh, just click Yes, and there you go. So now what you can do to get this uh, ROM is you go back, you go to where you just changed that, so for me it should be in here, there we go, so here is our ROM file for Castlevania, you would need to drag that in the same folder as nesspire.tns, and now uh, for the Game Boy, uh, it's fairly similar, um, I actually have a thing open here, so I'll show you, this one's Tetris for, oh gosh, gotta wait the seconds, uh, for, this is Tetris for the Game Boy. So the Game Boy emulator uh, can run both Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, which is nice. So I'll head back on over here, uh, I'll have to extract it. We'll go into the folder. And if it's a Game Boy game, it will end with .gb. If it's a Game Boy Color game, it will end with .gbc. Again, like the NES, move your cursor all the way to the right. Add .tns. Hit enter. It will ask, give you a warning. Click yes. Go back over to the Link software. Uh, whoops. Uh, you're going to click on, you're going to find where you just had that. Put uh, added that extension. Go to your Game Boy folder. Drag and drop that in there. Okay, now we're pretty much done with everything we need to do on the computer. So now we'll just go on the calculator and I'll show you how these things work. Okay, now that we've installed the emulators and the ROMs, here is how you will run them. So, to run Doom, you're just going to head into My Documents, and then you are going to go to the Doom folder. And to run Doom, all you got to do is click on Doom1 or Doom2.wad, whatever you have. And you just select that file, and it will launch this screen, and then you just hit enter to start. And, okay, there we go. So, um, this is Doom. I'm sorry about the bad lighting, guys, but, uh, yeah, it does work, I promise. So, to exit out, just hit escape. For the Game Boy games, open up your Game Boy folder. And you can run them directly from the ROM file. So here I have my Tetris.gb. I can just go ahead and start that up. And as you can see, it will start up Tetris. Um, the controls for the Game Boy emulator are in the instructions file that you transferred. So to exit out of Game Boy, just hit Escape. Now the NES is a little different. To start an NES game, you actually have to start the NES Spire. So that's my. You have to select that document. Then we'll be brought to this screen. Then you have to uh, scroll over to the ROM that you want to start. And then you have to hit the Shift key to start it. And as you can see, it's loaded up. Again, the controls for the NES emulator are in the instructions file. And then to quit out of the emulator, you just hit the Q button. Uh, Q, here it is. Okay. And then lastly. In the endless folder, to this is to patch that file version like I was talking about. You just run the vpatch document. Now you can see it'll ask you. So the for me the newest version is 3.2. Then hit enter. 0. 0. 0.1219. So that's the newest version for me. It'll say it's been patched. And then you can check it by hitting 5 and 4 on the main menu. As you can see, it's says that I have version 3.2.0.129, even though in reality I have OS version 3.1.0.392 with Endless. 
Um, so that way when you plug it into your computer, it won't ask you to update it. And then the final thing is that instructions file that I was talking to you guys about. Here it is. Um, it has controls for both the Game Boy and the NES emulator, as well as a few miscellaneous instructions. So you might want to read through this. It's not that long. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, please remember to like the video and uh, tell me if it helped in the comments. Uh, if you're having problems, you can... Uh, just comment on the video or PM me.